Hey folks, so I just wanted to give you a quick update on that uh, ultrasonic uh, sensor hooked up to an Arduino and the satellite modem. Uh, what I've gone ahead and done this time is uh, put the whole thing inside a UL certified weatherproof enclosure for electronics and attached a solar panel um, and a solar lipo charger so that this thing can be uh, deployed remotely and be self-powering, reporting to the Internet of Things, giving me the ability to uh, monitor things of interest from far away uh, over the Iridium satellite network. Uh, so this ran overnight, uh, reporting at a 10 minute interval, uh, reporting stage uh, as measured by that um, little ultrasonic sensor, the little gray cone you see at the end of the PVC. Um, worked great for, for a couple hours on a 10 minute interval and then I increased the uh, reporting interval to one hour. Didn't miss any data, which was uh, really positive. So now I'm running it through uh, one final test. I'm going to wait 24 hours to make sure that uh, this thing can report uh, consistently on a 24 hour interval. And then I'm going to pack it up and uh, ship it out to my customer for use in monitoring stage at a stock tank. So I'll show you the innards of this thing next. So as you can see here, what I've done is uh, taken the wires uh, from the ultrasonic sensor and fed them through PVC and conduit through a watertight fitting to the uh, bottom of this little remote environmental monitor. And these are fed through that little fitting right there. And then they get plugged into this little proto board. And let me grab a pointer right here. The way I've set this up for the customer is all they have to do basically is just uh, uh, take the, uh, the plug that's coming in through that uh, conduit and just uh, match it up with the plug that's attached to the proto board, uh, just matching the colors and that makes things a lot easier. As far as powering this thing up for the first time, um, what they'll do is they'll take this little plug right here which is going into the solar lipo charger and they'll just plug that right in and uh, that will start things going. They won't have to do anything else aside from uh, check the readout display. And right now it's just in a kind of a waiting mode. Uh, it's just waiting for the telemetry interval to expire before it reports again. So uh, just a couple things that were added since the last time I showed you this is for one thing, of course, I've got the solar panel, which is right here. I've got some wraparound conduit that's coming into the side of the box. And then that's plugged into that little solar lipo charger, which is basically topping off the voltage on this lipo battery right here, which in turn is uh, basically feeding this proto board uh, about four volts, powering the Arduino, or in this case, the Adafruit Pro Trinket, which in turn is driving the uh, satellite modem and the OLED, as well as the ultrasonic sensor via this cable right here. So that's basically it. This is going to get shipped out to my customer. The only thing they're going to have to do after installing it is just plug this little plug in right here. This is going to be unplugged when I ship it. So they'll receive it. They'll plug that in. That will boot everything up and they should be good to go. And one comment about the wire that's uh, coming out of the watertight fitting uh, hooked up to the ultrasonic sensor. If this gets pulled really hard, what might happen is it might actually unplug from the ultrasonic sensor in that PVC fitting. And then uh, you'll know it because you'll start getting garbage data in the, uh, uh, in the ThingSpeak channel that you're connected to. So um, I've got plenty of slack here to prevent that from happening. Uh, when this gets inserted through that watertight fitting, just make sure to, to basically do it gently and pull it out gently. You don't want to pull this hard and basically uh, have the uh, plug come out. If, if it does come out, it's no problem. There's a little WD-40 on that ultrasonic sensor uh, where it seats in that PVC. You can unscrew it. Uh, you can draw the plug back out and replug it in. I decided not to solder those wires into the uh, ultrasonic sensor because if I have an issue, it's just a lot easier just to be able to unplug and plug things uh, in the future if I need to replace that sensor for any reason. So one other thing that I'll mention about this setup is that LiPo battery 
has uh, current protection circuitry in it. So if there's too much current being drawn off the battery, to prevent a fire, it'll just basically shut itself down. And uh, what you'll have to do is unplug the battery and plug it back in if that happens. So uh, when first powering this up, if the modem has been unplugged for a while and the capacitor is fully discharged, um, the circuit may actually try to uh, draw too much current off that LiPo and you'll see this little green light right here just flash on for a second and flash off. That means that that charge protection circuitry is kicked in. And the way to get around that is just when you plug in the battery, if that happens, don't insert this all the way. Just kind of uh, close the connection gently. And what you'll do is you'll just uh, disconnect it, connect it, disconnect it, connect it several times. And eventually uh, the Arduino will come on. What you're doing is each time you connect and disconnect, you're slowly adding a little bit of charge to this capacitor until it gets to the point where it's not drawing so much current uh, off that LiPo battery. So essentially it's kind of like priming the pump. Um, that shouldn't be a problem if the, uh, if the modem's been used recently and there's some charge left in it, but if these modems have been shipped um, from Great Britain and they've been sitting for a while and you plug them in the first time and you try powering them off these LiPos, that's just something that uh, I kind of discovered um, the hard way, so I thought I'd share that with all of you. And uh, this is the 9602 model modem, and I'm informed that the 9603s that, that uh, Rockblock currently produces no longer have this issue. So uh, this thing has been in sleep mode for three hours. I just checked the voltage on it. It was a little over four volts. So the sleep mode on this, uh, on for the uh, Iridium library that's been written to work with the Arduino, actually keeps the, uh, the uh, capacitor charged over time. So that's a good thing. So one more thing I'm gonna mention about this installation is uh, thanks to a recommendation that was made by my colleagues over at ZeroCraft. And uh, David suggested that I use this um, shielded Teflon insulated uh, wire for my signal cable between the, uh, uh, between the ultrasonic sensor and the Arduino. Uh, the reason being that uh, long lengths of wire can act kind of like radio antennas and introduce all kinds of noise into the system. So by using this shielded wire, uh, and uh, you'll notice that uh, it's got this, sh this metal shielding on it right here, which is essentially what I used for my ground wire. Um, what this does is it uh, prevents the interference of electrical noise, say from a nearby generator or motor or anything that might uh, introduce noise into the system. Uh, the fact that it's Teflon wrapped is also nice because that prevents it from becoming brittle, uh, especially in the harsh Arizona environment where I live. And uh, the uh, last thing I'll mention about this is this wire was donated um, to thanks to uh, my friend at ZeroCraft. It is much more expensive than say, store-bought uh, thermostat wire. But man, it's a lot easier to work with. It's not as uh, stiff and uh, I really like it. So I'm gonna have to pick some of this stuff up. And one thing I learned about uh, taping things up, you'll notice I have some tape on the battery and right here, this is to prevent there from being a uh, strain on this little fragile connector on the, on the uh, battery. I was using electrical tape in the past. When electrical tape gets hot, the glue just gets really soft and it makes a real nasty mess. So I had a little bit of leftover Velcro and the glue on Velcro is much stronger. Um, it doesn't it doesn't degrade like uh, the glue on on electrical tape So I've been using that to kind of like tape things up. I've got my thermistor right here um, Coming off the lipo charger attached to the lipo with uh, with this uh, Velcro and then I also uh, velcro the wire right here so that I can remove this little plug uh, And attach it again without creating any strain on the connection coming off of the lipo battery so that's gonna um uh, prevent there from being issues or breaks in the uh, in the hardware. And just one more comment about deploying these in the field. Um, although this is in a nice watertight fitting, you could get a little bit of moisture in here, so it's good to, to have one of these desiccant packs in here just to keep things nice and dry and keep your uh, circuit from shorting out. Running free and he's waiting there for me and you.